And we're live. Hello, guys, to another live stream from the Creative Insider podcast. Um, I hope you can be watching this live or you can just watch it recorded. Um, yeah. So today we're going to be trying to do something different. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a um, live stream about how you can use the principle of Young Gale to design a livable cities. And in order to do that, I'm going to get a project that I did um, for my master thesis, uh, which is a combination of many things. Um, so the first suggestion I can give you is um, when you do your master thesis on architecture, do it about something you care and something that you can relate to and something that's personal for you. Um, in my case, I came to live in Frankfurt now six years ago. And Frankfurt and mine, it's uh, also according to the lists of 2022 of the charts for most livable cities, I think number six or seven. And, um, and, um, and I come from Rome, which is one of the most sort of, say, iconic cities, um, like a dream city, but it's not so livable, but it has this magic in it. And this magic was something that I've always missed um, here in Frankfurt. So um, once I read the book, Cities for People, which you can see there in the background, um, I was thinking, okay, this is how, this is why we enjoy certain cities more than others. And this is why, despite Rome is not the most livable city, it's, um, it's, it has its magic. So there are certain uh, characteristics of a city that um, we kind of lost. And nowadays, through modern architecture, through modernity, when the car uh, was the main, um, so to say, mobility tool across the city, and we was we we lost this magic and beauty of the old town roads and old town um, old towns that we love and the old town architecture. So I'm gonna be sharing my screen. Um, so I'm gonna go small. Um, you can find the link to this project in my Instagram bio. Uh, you can also find it in the description of this YouTube, um, in this YouTube live. Um, so I will use the layouts to describe the project to you because I think, um, I think it makes more sense. Um, so I'll go full screen. I hope, guys, you see it full screen. I mean, you can see me too small down there. Um, well, the layout's in Italian, but that shouldn't be so important for you. Like, I can, I will explain to you what are the the, the different things. I didn't want to do a separate presentation because, in my opinion, it's always nice to have the um, the regular layouts that you would do for a presentation it's more realistic and um don't get scared of this horror vacui let's call it this way this um fear of the emptiness because i couldn't decide to do the layouts a little bit more with more space because that was the requirement from the university and in the end of the day i needed to graduate and at, uh, after, until a certain level i needed to do what they want they wanted me to do uh, but everything it's on the layouts is something that I decided. So um, I want to start with a premise. I wasn't some student that was talented in urban design and um, certainly was not my my strength. But uh, after reading the books of Young Gale, which it's uh, Life Between Buildings and also um, Livable Cities, I understood what exactly is urban design and what exactly is um, how to design a city. And it's not about how many surfaces, volumes. Uh, it's more about how you design the public space. Um, but every time you start a design, you need information. You need to gather information in order to take um, design decisions that are not just artsy, but it's just design driven through information. Because, um, you know, in design, form follows function. So you have to collect certain data. So here, what you see in this part of the screen is blue map. Um, this blue map, it's, um, I can try to zoom also further in. Okay, it doesn't work to zoom further in. 
Um, this blue map you see here is the historical development on Frankfurt. So in order to understand better the city, I bought a book that was describing the history of Frankfurt in the last thousand years, I think, or more. Um, no, definitely more, sorry. Um, but um, basically the first sediments here started in the prehistoric era, but that was not so relevant. So the first relevant urban settlement in Frankfurt were in the Roman age. So the darkest blue, it's really this, it was sort of a, like a border city for the Roman empire here because of the river. And um, then um, there was the Carolingian era. So, you know, like Carl the Great was this king of uh, the Roman, uh, what is it called? Holy Roman Empire, which was basically France and Germany. So there were some uh, further developments. Then in the medieval, there were some further developments, which were also in this historian core. And then going we go in the 1800s and then 1900s we get uh further away from the city you can see that um the city expands more when there is the invention of car so because you can travel quickly or the invention of uh, underground buses everything that's uh, a motor uh, vehicle um, allowed the expansions of the city in, in these very big distances. This is not even the whole city that's considered to be Frankfurt. So this was the first interesting part is to understand how the city grew and the city structure. Um, the second interesting thing, it was based on a document I found from the Frankfurt city planning uh, office, which was about the functions of the city. So you can see that in the city center, this is the historical center, we have more like a mixed use, it's very mixed. Then we have um, the yellow side, which are the expansions of the 1800. We have mainly buildings that are for livings, but we have still some mixed use. Um, historical centers expands here too. This is the main central area. And then we have this side orange areas, which in the city is expanding too. And the blue are the, um, the part of the city which are mainly like for a living. So they're like basically where the people just go to sleep and they're just mainly formed by flats. And the green are like some peripheral parts, urban sediments that are not so connected with the, with the rest of the city. Um, and the whole idea started from this formula that I found in the book of Jan Gell, which describes how the public life in a public space works. It's basically public life equals the number of people per time they spend in a space. So, for example, what I took here is a picture of the most crowded street of the city, which is called Sile, where there are a lot of malls and shops. There we see a lot of people, but they're not leaving the space, just moving from one point to the next. And they don't spend time here, they just move a lot. Then we have the main historical plaza, the main historical square, which is called um, Romer. And in this square, we can see that we don't have so many people, but they're definitely spending more time. There are some people sitting. Um, and then there are some people just walking to enjoy tourists to see the area, to sightsee the area. And then one important area of the city are, of course, it's of course the uh, bank banking area because Frankfurt is the main um, center for finances of Germany and one of the main financial centers uh, of Europe. Um, so we have this banking area, we see a very few people and this is one of those places that get alive or die according to the period of the week. So, for example, in the from Monday to Friday, this area will be very, very full. Will be like with a lot of people because everybody go working. Um, then they go in the um, lunch break, and so the area is highly lived. But on the weekend, this area is like a ghost town. You can just walk in between the streets, and you'll see very few people. And then we have one of the squares we have in the 1800 area, which is again with a lot of chairs, coffees. So people sit there. There are not so many people, but they spend a lot of time in this um, in this square. So 
it's a very livable square. So you have to always calculate according to this formula, which is uh, public life equals people per time spent in a space. So when you walk around, you can see like if it's a space where you're like sitting, why you like sitting in this space? Why, why you like to stay in a certain space? And then we have the last part, which is the 1900 expansion, which are basically these areas here of blocks that are all the same layout. They are all repetitive along very long distances where you don't see people at all because they're just homes. The, the people don't have anything to do outside. Um, and um, so another important analysis you can do with the um, principles of Yang Gel is the five minute series. So what I just did, it just I do the zoom in in the different areas um, of the city, which is the old city, the city, the historical city center, the 1800 city, and then the 1900 city. And one thing that Yang Gel says in, in his book is that the five minutes, so we're basically lazy. We don't like to move around a lot. Um, and uh, therefore we want to have the closest, we will just relate to the closest to us. So we um, have this psychological barrier because his wife is a psychologist actually. So every human being wouldn't do or will Let's do something that takes more than five minutes or go somewhere where it takes more than five minutes. And therefore, um, the five minute city here is more or less the walking distance in, in five minutes and the cycling distance because we use a lot of the a lot of bikes. And usually in a livable city, you should be able to move around with the bike because it's the fastest um, way to moving in a city. And we, we, you would see how much it changes the, the environment. And you can see that here, it changes quite a lot. Here, it changes a little bit less, but it still changes a lot. You have all these different streets, all these different courtyards. Um, there is a lot happening. And we can see in the 1900, where the basically urban planning was more oriented on the cars and not on the people anymore, we have this very seamless pattern. And the spaces are all the same. We have just streets with the sort of green areas in between and nothing more. No shops, nothing. Um, and in this big map, we just uh, wanted, I wanted just to basically show where the area is compared to the main, uh, to the main places in the city, to the main centers in the city. So this is the banking city. This is uh, this is called Sachsenhausen. It's basically the south part of the city, which is across the river. Here we have the exposition center, which is quite huge. So it's one of the main entrances of the city. These are the main entrances from the city in the different parts. So here we have an industry area. This is the old ring, the green ring. And then we have the, it's called like the Allen ring. So which are these very large Parisian streets with trees which make this second ring and uh, basically the area is this triangle my area of development of the city planning it's the point of this industrial area here that's slowly shifting towards becoming a regular area of the city because we don't need so many industries anymore because productivity has been changing in the last two decades in particular, we have more like IT and uh, similar things, like more offices. Um, so in the second layout, we like I decided to examine what have been some projects in the last 20 years that have been going on in the city and what in this project work and what not, because you have to analyze what happened before and what what when what was done well and what was done wrong in order to try to do something that's different so this is this area here uh, which is called the west port the west harbor so what happened basically is that in the early 2000s a lot of people were moving like a lot of wealthy people were moving outside of frankfurt because they didn't want to live in the city and uh, the city wanted to keep the wealthy people as residents because they pay a lot of taxes of course and they decided to create this very nice 
mixed area, which is basically you live on a harbor. You have this nice tower with restaurants. Here we have other office buildings with restaurants. And here you have also other buildings that are dedicated to living um, to create these very luxurious flats uh, where you can also have your own yacht. You can have your jet parked here and just live in. This is basically very, very central. You you can walk to the central area. Or you can work in the banking district because, of course, the banking um, people have a lot of money. And then I decided to just um, explore what are, I took the characteristic of a livable city and I put them here. So how much is the city, um, how much is this project, for example, friendly to bicycles? So quite friendly to, to people walking to like pedestrians, very friendly. Um, as I said before, like um, short short distances to different um to different um functions quite good they are very short distances you can walk to the restaurant you can uh, walk to the supermarket you can walk to the shop um and then you have like mixed use or is there mixed use um but then we have other aspects of of the project such as um the mix the mixed social uh, layers are the inhabitants of this project um, mixed socially? And no, they're not. They're almost like everybody should be like are rich people because it's super expensive to buy a flat here. Um, do we have cultural activities? Well, we don't have a lot of cultural activities. Density is one very important aspect because more densely you can build and more like cost efficient will be. So it's middle dense. It's not so dense. And economically, is it? accessible no it's not uh, do we have public spaces we have quite a few public spaces so this project was very successful for what it needed to be so retain the richest people in town but it's not the optimal project for um for anything else um then we have the most disastrous project that has been built lately in frankfurt which is the um, uh it's this huge transformation it happened in, in, in Frankfurt. So this was um, this were all the railways leading to the exposition center of Frankfurt, which weren't that used anymore or weren't used anymore. The station was completely dismissed, was not needed. So they wanted to transform the whole uh, area into a new um, city, city part, city expansion. And it's called the um, European LA, the European Boulevard, so to say, uh, which was then like called Stalin Boulevard because it looks like these Stalinist cities where you have this central axe and all these blocks around um, with, I don't know, arguable quality of architecture, um, very seamless um, and straight lines. For example, one thing that Young Gale says is that it's very boring for pedestrians if you have a straight line where you can see basically long distances that makes you feel like tired of walking. And you can see in this image here that like you can see basically until the end of the horizon, you see these blocks. And this is something very, very boring to see for a pedestrian. And you can see they're like huge. They're not like few, few... Mm, they have a lot of there are a lot of towers there are multiple stories um so again with our and they're all like living or offices or hotels but there is not a lot of shops not a lot happening in the ground floor there is not a, a an alive ground floor so yeah we don't have like um uh also the thing that happened is that all these new buildings are very expensive and they are nearing this other uh, part of the city, which is called Galus, which is basically characterized by this multicultural community. And because the flats in this new area are so expensive, the, the flats next to the new area started getting more expensive too. So the this um, 
mix that we were used to have the of the cultures and the people they're moving out because it's so expensive that they cannot keep staying there so the project was extremely negative for the city and it was i don't know the biggest investment in europe i think several billions i don't know how many billions but a lot of billions were poured into this project and it's a big 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 bummer it doesn't work at all and um, it's basically you never go there unless you don't live there and then another transformation that happened was the historical center because you have to know that um Germany during Second World War was completely destroyed, so there were no historical buildings. And Frankfurt was also among the most destroyed cities. And um, so they built the historical center completely new, and they call it the new old city. So they did this sort of old-looking style buildings, or sometimes they're really like old-style building to make it more picturesque. It looked a little bit like Disney. It's very beloved by tourists and by people uh, and we can see it's very livable there are very short dif- distances you can go by foot you can uh, just bike through um, there are some uh, there is a very good uh, mixed use um, there are um, there is not a lot of uh, social mix because it's very expensive to live downtown there are some uh, cultural activities but not too many and it's not so dense and it's not so economically available so this project is very nice from the side of the livability um, and this other project was very good on the side of the density um, sorry this project was very livable and this project was not so um, good for like social mix density and uh, it's very expensive like it's not it's not affordable. This is like the affordability of a project. Uh, and then we have another transformation as I get because the city understood that the banking um, banking part of the city it's not live during the weekend. They're trying to build now these vertical cities of mixed use towers. This is designed by Big. This is the Omni Tower currently is completed, and this is the Frankfurt Four, which is currently under construction designed by UN Studio, where we have like an active ground floor and within the floors we have hotels, we have flats, we have offices and here will there will be four towers, so each tower will have different functions. And they will try to create certain social mix because per law they have to allow some certain percentage of, of affordable flats, uh, but it's still not very accessible, it's actually very expensive, it's very dense. Um, there are not so many social, um, uh, cultural, acti- cultural activities. It's very little social mix, but you have very short distances to many different functions of the city. You can just walk and you can bike around. And then we are getting, so basically this is the new old town. Um, this is the banking area here that's being these vertical cities. And then we're getting closer to the area. And next to the area of my project, the latest big transformation was where is the tower of the European Central Bank. Um, So we have this very huge tower, which is monumental. Basically, there are two towers interconnected in between. And next to it, they created this very new livable area for the new employees of the the European Central Bank. there is this uh, sort of uh, railway that divides this part of the city of the outer ring where there is this mainly industry area. This is also a new park that was created with the transformation of the ECB, the new tower of the ECB. And we can see here that there is a social mix in these um, buildings. There are quite a few public spaces. It's reachable by bike by for pedestrians. There are short distances, quite a few. Um, they are not so expensive because they're like they're still very expensive, but they are more like um, affordable flats. Uh, quite dense, not too dense, not it's sort of in sweet spot in between, but there are not so many cultural activities. So 
uh, from here on, um, the so this is the things like these are information that will be used in order to make um, a better project um, and to like see what works and what doesn't work and sort of apply it to find the sweet spot. So in this part, we zoom in more in the area. There is a little bit of like analysis of what are the cool stuff that are happening around here. There's like a weekly market uh, where you can sell your old stuff. There is this very cool bar here called Austin with a super nice view towards the towards the skyline. Uh, there is the park around the ECB where a lot of skaters. You can play basketball, street football. Um, there is the this is a harbor where there are like um, basically cargo ships coming in. And this is the history a little bit. When it started, it was starting uh, shortly before the 1900 to be built. Um, these are some historical images so that you get an idea. And then it's important to study what is currently available in the area. So the blue circles are mainly office spaces and the brown circles are mainly like industry areas. This is our our area of new development, which will expand in the rooms, in the spaces around. Um, and so this is the functions. Then we have the main connections, main infrastructure. So here we have the railway with the station, which is present here. Here we have one of the main car access coming into city. This is the entrance from the um, east side of the city. And then we have also another entrance from the south side of the city. So they all join here. So from this analysis, we see that this is a very, very important point for like mobility and infrastructure. Um, then we have like the green system. So here the ECB, it's on a big park. Oops, sorry. It's in a huge park. And here we have the linear park along the river because in Frankfurt, uh, the river sites are designed as a linear park where you can walk. And then this is the new park. And this could be expand in this direction further on. And then here there is a plan to expand this green park towards the bigger green park in this part of the city. So we see that also this is again a point where there are so many things crossing. And in this diagram here with the red dots, you see the most interesting part of the city. So there is the bar, the park, the station. Um, here there's like a cultural center. Here there are some office spaces and coffees. Here there is another museum. So this is like the most interesting areas of the, um, the, the most interesting point of interest in this area. Um, and this was the master plan that was made. I think it was made by the ASP office, which is Albert Speer and partner. Um, you can Google who is Albert Speer. <laughs> it's quite ironic they still have an office. Um, but nevertheless, lives go on. So I guess it's okay. B things have changed. Um, so yeah, you could say by the representation of the master plan and maybe it's nice, but I so I wanted to criticize it a little bit. Um, so the connections, you see that there are main car connections, uh, which are too big. We don't need that much space for cars in between of a city. Um, but here you can start walking through, but then the, the path gets interrupted. The main area that is the park, you have to walk long distances to get to the station because you cannot walk through. Um, here also, like the paths gets interrupted a lot by car streets. Like all this, this is a street for a car. Every time there is a car street, this can be considered an interruption because you have to wait to cross the street. Um, and this will like disallow or disadvantage people to walk around. And if you know that there are too many, um, yeah, adversities on your on your walk, you won't, you rather take a car, you won't go out. So this will kill a little bit public life. So this was one of the first critique. Um, another critique was, you can see there's no real, like, um, no real 
um how do you call it like the um, the spaces don't have hierarchy so you don't know if this is a square or a courtyard you don't know if this is a street or 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 a square uh, same here so it's all homogenic there are these blocks this these blocks that are very boring. And then the other thing that, it, that it's very sad about this project is the function that they are again very divided. You have offices here, so the blue is offices, so you have this huge office building which will be full from Monday to Friday and then empty on the weekend. And then you have these flats where just people leave, there are no shops. And then you have this hotel which also like could have been empty for two years because of the pandemic, for example. Like if you have a pandemic, this hotel will be mainly empty. So you don't want to have like um, buildings like this, which are monofunctional. So here you have to consider that every pro the idea of a master thesis should show what are your skills. So one thing that is very important when you do architecture is that, I mean, you should think about also the business side of it. So the business side is that when you have a client, the client wants to build as much surface as possible. So if you do some crazy shape, um, you have to justify it in front of the in front of your client with the space, because otherwise your project's not going to get built. Like whether you like it or not, it is the way it goes. For example, this is the case for the VM houses. Um, the VM house is designed by a big uh, were built because he justified the shape um, by the surface he could generate. So I took this number, which I found through the B&L group, I think, who was the investor in this project. And they had 150,000 square meters uh, of different functions. So you can see here, um, they had education and culture, just 1,000 square meters shops 2000 square meters hotel 21000 square meters offices 56000 square meters and um living 35000 square meters so i took these numbers and when i started designing my master plan which is on the next uh, layout i started from here because if you want to do something like this you have to justify it but in green you can see where i maximized some surfaces by changing the function and where I reduced some because I thought it's not needed. So we have um, education and culture is 1,000 square meters because basically this was dedicated for kindergarten, so I keep this the same. Then I increased the commercial area from uh, approximately 3,000 to 9,000. Um, then the hotel, the hotel was reduced because I don't think you need so much hotel space and also like you'll see that the concept of hotel changed a little bit and then i reduced a little bit the offices and um, made more um, living because the problem one problem that we have in frankfurt is it's very expensive to get a place so the only way to reduce the price is to make more flats uh, and the cities are expanding they're not shrinking so this is a very important thing um, so here we have the concept. Until now, we had like functions that are separate. We have rather a hotel, uh, like home, living, offices, or shops. And in the new concept, we will have in one building, we'll have all the functions. So it's one building that has all the functions. Another thing that I took is the street section of the current master plan that's being realized and see how much of the street is dedicated to the different uh, way of moving around. So 22% of the street, just eight meter is dedicated. So we have a total of 36 meter between the buildings and just eight meter are dedicated to people. Uh, three meter, 8% are dedicated to bikes and 20 meters are dedicated to cars and then we have a little bit of greenery. So um, this is the main streets. And then we have the secondary streets. We have just 36% or six meters dedicated to people and 64%, 10.5 meters dedicated to cars. Um, so I said, if we design cities for cars, we'll have cars. So we have to change this. So I basically reduced the distance between 
the buildings so that you have smaller street and you can see that here now we have more like room in between this is the the usually you have to get uh, 0.4 the height of a building and this will be the distance you have to maintain from the middle of the street or neighboring building now we have 39 percent so 10 meters for people 16 percent for meter for bikes then we have 30 35 percent for cars so this will be our main street so you can see here now the dominant is the person then there is a bike i mean for bike we just need less space and then we have the car and then um in the secondary streets i decided to go with a type of street that it's uh basically um, coming from the netherlands which is called um i think it's called wunerf wunerf which is a street where you don't have like sidewalks. Everything is on the same level, and the um, urban um, the f urban furnishment is made in such a way that the cars don't drive too fast. So all pedestrians, bicycles, and cars move on the same level, and the cars are have to move in such a way that they cannot drive, um, they cannot speed, and this is a way that you slow down traffic. Um, and this was the skyline cut like in two because I couldn't fit it in, in one. Uh, but this is the skyline of the first project. So you have this also like very monotone architecture with just towers here and there. And then now we have like the towers that are in certain part of the project where you can reach density. And then you have the shape that revokes the um, old town. So this was something that I was um, taking inspiration from the city of Frankfurt because in the city of Frankfurt, you have like the skyline that's neighboring directly the old town. And so why don't you, why don't use this concept in our project to a smaller, to a sm on a smaller case. And once you design the urban plan, um, you don't have to start from the buildings. You start from the from the spaces that are dedicated to people in order to stay outside or move around. So I start with the pre-existing connections, which are the main street connections. So basically these were fixed more or less. This was fixed and this could be var variating in a new uh bright in the new la um yeah in, in the new size, so to say. And then um I generated the secondary grid of connection, which are these uh, winners. And one concept that Yangel explains in his books is that you don't want to have these straight lines where you just see through. So basically, um, using the morphology of the city, I created this sort of spider net street so that if you stand here, as you see, the street is not going straight. So you won't be saying straight and you would be curious to go around the corner and see what happens here. But then here, the street doesn't continue. It just shifts. So you're again curious to move around. And the same happens here. And this principle was used everywhere. So this is the whole new area that uh, it's uh, along this sort of spider net. And then after I decided to design the spider net, I went with the public spaces because one critique on the old master plan is that there were no public space hierarchy. So now you have these main connections to this square here and we'll see how we used um, other techniques to avoid having uh, interruptions of the connections by, I don't know, waiting to cross the street or similar. And you can see that you have an axe where you move around there is a square here there are certain different square here then you cross again there is another kind of square there is a street here there is a public space um, here along the river there are public spaces and then last but not least the green spaces which are in between this uh, net of streets and plazas and at the end of the hierarchy come the building. So the buildings kind of rise in these left spaces around. So you go, you reverse the process. You start from the connections that are there. You create a spider net. You create public spaces, green spaces, and last come the buildings. And this is the end result of our project, which is this master plan here. You can see. So... 
you can see that here there's now a square with trees this will be like a more business plaza and then this big street that is very trafficked i decided to design a bridge that it's sort of sloped gently enough to get high enough in the middle so that cars tracks and trams which pass here can go through uh, and also gentle enough so that you can bike up and bike down and you can go through the station and you don't have to wait all this time here and then here you have this um courtyards which are not closed they're semi-public so they're very close by the buildings but you still can go through so you create this net of spaces and the rooftops for example you can see they're slope um, but they're not all the same so you have this variety you want to have like in an old town um, here where you're on the river where you have certainly more room because now build spaces you create taller buildings or to create the density you need or here you create taller buildings too because they are like just railways so you can go higher here and also this is the south so yeah you can do that and the you will have like some natural greenery, you have lakes and so on, water it's important to have. Here you can have this larger like food courts or malls, so you can be on the river and just go to the mall, but then also like um, living around. Um, we'll see how we activated the buildings in order to enhance public life um, in one of the next layouts. So yeah, so you can see here the connections of this green park that goes here and it will go through the station of course you I, I was a one man team so i had a limited resource to like explore until where this plan can go but this was basically the dash line you see the red dash line is until where i decided to go um yeah so another thing that it was done in the old master plan is that they place some towers here along the park Maybe I can do a video, I can go to the construction site because they're under completion right now. And then they have towers here by saying that you could see the skyline, but you cannot see the skyline because here you have the super tower of the ECB. So you just see the ECB and not be beyond that. And so I did only towers here. I did way taller towers here. So these towers, they can see the skyline and you can see that they will be like stepped so that you maximize the view also for for these towers here too so let's go see how the de the design of the towers the next layout is also oh, here you can see now the most specifically the development of this triangle as i said here you have the bridge so you can go from the station walk or bike it doesn't matter then you have this business plaza with sitting possibilities with big trees that will sort of reduce the noise from the street or make you feel more home because also like the trees play a big role the kind of tree so here you can play something bigger so that protects kind of the area so you have some water fountains to the entrance of the towers um, and then you have these irregular shapes again so that you don't have a straight view on on the like a straight line so that you see oh i have to walk so much and then you walk here there are smaller trees and then you can enter this bigger plaza probably here there will be coffee shops that put sitting uh, possibilities there will be like a playground uh, or there will be like a possibility to build a stage in summer so there are concerts there will be a fountain where people can just jump in when it's a warm weather so this will be like, and this is inspired by the Romer, Romer Square of the city center. So you have this basic modern version of the Romer Square. Um, and here you have these spaces where you can access, um, which are semi-private, semi-public, because all the apartments or all the spaces look into this um, into, into this semi-private space so if you're a stranger you will be observed somehow so you can still use the space but you cannot miss uh behave in the space and there are different sizes different um they the, the inner courtyards they have different size so therefore different um um 
hierarchy and then you'll have trees and the entrance so no, no car will be able to go in here um and here also you have along the street the buildings are not aligned so if for example here we have aligned buildings but on this side um the buildings don't follow like the the shape of the wood earth so you'll have again like not a straight view you have also vegetation and here the street itself the morphology of the terrain goes it's curved and they also like jump in in different levels then you can see the buildings are not on the same line so that you'll be curious to to explore the different parts and in the less inviting spaces where you have placed for example ramps if you go in the underground garage um, because in order to be building so close to each other uh, the buildings should be like considered as one building so in my concept they have a common underground floor so that you can just build closer and not having to make big distances in between so you can densify a little more and achieve the same surface and also you can see in every entrance for example we'll see later on in the detail uh, of this entrance you have also closed par parking space or parking space for bicycles so it will be very easy if you live here to leave your bike and it won't be a struggle to use a bike you won't need to carry your bike uh, on the stairs or taking the elevator or just going underground and carrying it upstairs so we'll see this detail more in detail later and here you can see the um, the different the concepts so this is was the area uh you have this attractive station you go through the public spaces you can come into the public this is the public access of the project so the side streets will lead you to this public space more crowded area so to say and here you have the the green path from the park so here will be more green also here you could i mean again you can explore infinitely such a big project but here also the um, urban urban furniture can be designed in a way to make you do more like park activities uh certain sittings or playgrounds and so on and then you have the system of the i call them controllable spaces so they are observable spaces where they kind of private semi-private semi-public but they can be controlled easily and we'll see how the architecture allows this um, this function so uh the next and here we go with the towers so these are the towers this is how they were generated so we have this very weird uh, very weird um, shape of the area instead of just building all together in follow the shape there is the main axis where people can should pass by and then you just rationalize this in some rectangular shape form and you extrude the max area and then you just step them down so you can have the parks on the top and here they go lower this go higher so you maximize the panorama too and you have this cool glass facade and also you step it further on towards the public space so that the towers are not so monumental towards the public space and also the people who will be on those terraces will connect more to the to the ground level and um, so you have this rooftop gardens everywhere i mean this again is just something that i designed it could have been explored by landscape architect you know maybe way better way or just can be could have been done more organically it's just an example uh, but it's the concept that it's important so you can see here on the top there will be some trees and also one thing that i did is when you have a tower you have a technical floor so the technical floor usually it's on the rooftop but why put it on the rooftop where you have the most valuable space which is basically the view from the top uh, so one of the middle floors will be like a technical roof or a technical uh, floor um, and another concept that i did was in the functions so when you build a tower you have to concentrate on the core so i concentrated in designing this core and we have like 
um, hotel rooms on this side on the upper floors where you have the best view so you just create a hotel on this half of the towers which is west oriented and you have the best views and then on this area where you need to work you have the view towards the the plaza and this will be like um you you can do a maximum of 400 square meter unit which can be rent by a company or a company can rent um, multiple stories or sorry uh, multiple units and here also you see an example where here you have the hotel and here you have the office units which can be then arranged as an open space uh, different floors usually the module of an office is 135 meters um, so every two axes would be one singular single office or you can just arrange it i mean it was just an example it's just a concept and then on the lower floors you can just maximize the office space you can adapt everything as an office space and here you can see the section how the different the different um, uh, basically the different cores are divided so this core will go until a certain level so you can get so at this point here the facade will be here you know just go out this is also the next terrace and the next terrace and here we have also the other terraces and you see that this connection between this roof garden this roof garden so you from here you can look down and see the people here and then here you can see the panorama and also this could be arranged to be a public space where people just go in and take the elevator without any problem get on the top and enjoy the panorama it will be again a public space instead of being or at least will be available for all the people that are use the users of the buildings um and here you can see the how the slope of the bridge comes gently inside the uh, inside the square um so yeah uh, i got help for these renderings i didn't do them myself because i didn't have uh i didn't have time um so not everything i mean i could have done some similar quality renderings, but um, but in the end I didn't have time, so I just needed to 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 submit my plans. So let's go to the next layout, which is the concept of the buildings. Um, so once you design, you have to design a mixed-use building. So the um, the strategy I adopt to do this, it's I just enlarge the, the the footprint of the building. So usually for residential you have 10 meters, but I went with 1350, which is one of the, um, the cuts, so to call it, for offices. And then you have these three modules this for the structure, which is 390 meters, 390 meters, um, and 390 meters and 50 40 on the length um, then you create the interconnection in between the the building so you have the vertical connection which will be the staircase with the elevator and then you have horizontal one which will be the corridor from the outer of the building to the inner courtyard then you have corridors for the floors where it's near the middle corridor and then you have uh, the spaces in the upper level so this is the function so we have the public floor which will be shopping space in between these connections then we'll have a co-working space which we'll see later and then hotel and one floor and then we have like flats and then we shape the building in a modern way but still remembering the local architecture there is a dedicated layout. I'll show you a little bit later how these shapes uh, were created. But you can see we have then this shape, but then we have many shapes where the, we have L buildings that will have different rooftops. Uh, and, uh, or, yeah, we'll have this also like sort of stepped buildings. You have like blocks, just like a regular building, smaller shape building. And here is like the study of the elevations. So we'll have one elevation towards 
the streets, which is in between this uh, this raster goes like vertical, then the scheme go vertical. You create openings in between. Um, then you create material differences in between the first two floors, which have this very open facade. Then you have the hotel floor where there is something happening in order to... Um, you call these orders in architecture. So there will be one order in the first two floors, a different order in the floor in between, and then the order of the uh, living. And then the in, in inside courtyard, you have a similar um, a similar concept, but then there is no order in between. And then you have this sort of balconies that all shows towards the courtyard. And this was a concept of the view from the park. So you see that you have this sort of modern shaped buildings with this very big glass uh, surfaces in the in the first two floors then you have the hotel um then you have the colors that are inspired by the old architecture in town so you all have like all yellow facades red facades gray facades with red and you see the towers in between it kind of invite you also from the park to get into the street and explore what happens inside this here um so yeah, so let's go to see the next first function. So the co-working space, this is an example of the co-working space. So while designing this um, concept of buildings, you can also make a design that's for the business model. So nowadays we do everything in our life with the phone. Um, and um, also you can book co-working spaces and access them with your phone or you can just scan a QR code. So the idea was that um, a company that it's like WeWork or other co-working uh, services get, could participate investing into this project and uh, just um, allow you with an app to book your working space. Uh, the working space will be S, M, L, XL sizes. So maybe S is just you come here and you can sit on one stool and work on this table. Or M could be, okay, you have a more like a sitting position on a comfy chair. Uh, L could be like you work, I don't know, in a more, I don't remember exactly, but you can work like on a separate uh, on a separate area, just bigger space, and then you have the Excel where you can just book a room for for the um, for your team, for example, like four spaces or two, depending on the size of the team. Because usually, startups or or freelancer work in these rooms. Then you have conference room. Um, you have services like toilets, of course. And then you have like a common space where there will be a kitchen, maybe, I don't know, a billiard table or a foosball table, something that's one of those cool geeky perks. And here you can see the floor plan where you'll have like different rooms for four people, teams of two, teams of four, teams of three, tables. You have like a nice lounge where you can sit for a call maybe or similar um so futons where you can just lay down a little bit get a rest conference room here you have like some sort of kitchen telephone booth where you can just inside get in and and you can just maybe just be here for a couple of days because you're staying in a hotel you can book you know maybe on a business trip and you just come here from your hotel room and you work a little bit and uh, you pay just for the two three days of your stay and then you leave so this was the idea again to be able to interconnect with this building with your phone um in the ground floor also they could be like the cool thing is that you could be here on a holiday or on a work trip and you will be accessing a, a building where also locals live which is the best part of the airbnb uh, the best part of the airbnb is that you kind of get to experience the city really like the citizens of, of that place experience it. And here we can see one section of this courtyard where you see 
it will be a top floor under the roof maybe it's a service where you have all the um, technology you need for the offices there will be several shafts you have these lodges and balconies that are facing the courtyard you have sitting where you can you can access the city with uh from everywhere uh, and you can see also if there like if you're working here maybe you can do a coffee break or cigarette break down down here uh so this is the idea and then you have the hotel room so my concept for the hotel was again also to do something that it's can be used with your phone so basically, instead of having the classic hotel with the concierge and the reception and so on, and which stays half empty for most of the time, to create sort of this Airbnb situation where you have one floor, which is only like um, rooms, and you can have rather a room with a balcony or a room without a balcony. There will be a couple of service rooms where, I don't know, um, beddings can be washed. And there is this catering room where every morning they will refill for breakfast. You can have breakfast also on a balcony, uh, which is not bad. And um, you can go with the floors. And so again, this could be, uh, again, some cooperation from Airbnb and we work. And instead of just, um, they invest in the project and you have this app where you book directly your room in the hotel, you can book your working space. It can be packages. It can be a business model. So here we can see the the floor plan. You enter. You have nice bathroom. You have a little bit of a wardrobe. You have a double room, a desk where you could you could work directly in your room. You could just sit on the balcony uh, where you can take your breakfast from here and sit privately if you don't want to interact with other people. And again, you would see like the the inside courtyard. If you are in a room on this side or just enjoy the streets and um, yeah, you have like a bigger room if you are in this area. So you have some, there will be different options. And again, here we can see some of the street sections and the elevations. Um, so in the distance, the towers. You can see how the rooftops form this sort of nice pattern that's very interesting. Um, yes, and then we go to the flats. Uh, here again, uh, the decision was guided by some market analysis I found from the city of Frankfurt, how much need there is of different kind of flats. Um, so the the 36 percent of the flats will be uh single apartments like the smallest one then uh sorry uh then we'll have 22 percent which will be um for younger family so couple with one kid 27 will be um so this will be 60 square meters 80 square meters 95 square meters is basically a three-room apartment and over 100 square meters will be like a luxury apartment uh, which will be only the 15 percent this is the distribution i created and um, these are the layouts so we have the stair the elevator and uh, here on one side we'll have this will be the max size room so we have a very large uh living room with a kitchen um then here we have two restrooms one it's without a window one it's with a window then we have a double room here for two kids or one kid depending how much money you want to spend and then a bedroom and then on this area on this particular area uh, we have a, one of the bigger flat where we have a living room maybe a studio with a single bed Another room with a single bed, double bedroom. Here we have only bathrooms without windows. Oops. And this is one configuration in a smaller building. In bigger buildings, we'll have like the single apartment. For example, this one, yes, it faces north. It's not the nicest apartment, but it's a single guy or single girl apartment. 
So in this case, you won't be spending probably so much time at home. You'll be working or doing sports or stuff like that. So you'll still have a nice uh, living room where you can invite friends over. You have a nice spacious bedroom and you still have a view over the courtyard. So if your neighbor that's your friend sits down here, you can just see him say hi from the balcony, go downstairs, grab a beer on the local shop, which is on the ground floor. So this is the idea of the mixed use and the idea of this having all the so even if you like live here and you have a balcony you still can see at least some part of the park um so all the balconies faces these um courtyards and um yeah when you do a layout of the apartment it's very important that you have like the services separating the basically day area from the night area so you will always see like when you get in there was a here also you have a sliding door maybe it's small to see it in this format where you have a sliding door which can completely close this area from this other and uh, it's important to always have like um maybe like restrooms or i don't know like um here wardrobe space that generates this these service rooms that create a separation from the living rooms. This is how you can uh, define a good um, layout for, uh, for a flat. And again, you can see in this rendering the concept of the balcony. So if you have a balcony, you just go out and you'll see all the people downstairs. Maybe your kids are playing. If you have kids and you can just let them go out by themselves and you can keep an eye on them by sitting on the balcony um, and also other people can watch what is happening here so it's kind of like protected by the eyes of the people there will be people working who also you can see the people working there will be shops here in the ground floor so the area will be very lived and here also you can see sort of a, again like a view you'll have like these garages for the bikes i told you before the entrance of the apartment which are sort of set in so that you have like a roof while taking out your key um and just not standing in the rain um and things like that so this was the mixed use area um and this is the detail which i wanted to tell you about so you can see here that next to each entrance of the building, you have like a double story uh, bike storage where you can just um, put your bike in. Um, and this will be like a electrical uh, gate. So you just press, it's like a car garage, but instead of having cars inside, you have bikes. So if you want to have a cool bike in the city, you can just bike. Uh, buy an expensive bike and um, yeah put it in there will be safe and uh, it will be easy to take on take out and take in uh, and this is a little bit of the detail of the facade so here I went around the city to take pictures from historical buildings and you can see they look like different colors they can be white with red this red sandstone it's something very specific from this area of germany or the yellow or the bluish and they have this contrast so this is like taken here to show you that you can this will be fiber cement with colored fiber cement i also use like reference to real products when i just take also some samples of the facade to show them during the presentation of the master thesis um and yeah this was the concept uh, you have the rooftop story you have balconies which are made out of steel so that they're light and can just be separated from the rest of the structure without having thermal problems um here you have the space for the shops uh here you have this area where can you, you can integrate the signs of the shops so you won't create some sort of like sticker sticker facade with different logos you have nice room for the number when a friend tells you i live in street xy on number five you'll be able to clearly see the number 
you see there are windows, the windows that are in the apartments, they are always go till the floor and then you have a glass protection. So even if you don't have a balcony on the outer side, you have still this, this I think they're called French balconies, like you can see. Because still the climate is quite cold in winter here. So this also was inspired by the local architecture. And then last but not least, uh, interiors. So, for example, the office spaces, the co-working spaces can be done as nice industrial lofts where instead of taking an old building that that's uh, dismissed industrial building and create this nice, spacey um, windows and ceiling and high ceilings, you can build it. And also you need a little bit of higher ceilings in this floor because all the um, installations that come from the flats will have different shapes. So they will need one floor where you redirect them in the right position. Again, this probably will have more shafts than it has. So you have this nice, I don't know, polished uh, concrete floor. You have the sitting areas. You have the common tables that have some sort of separation. You have here and smaller like the, um, the stools on the higher sitting position. Uh, so here you can see the different cameras I this, took these readings from. They were done by uh, Vicway. Um, and uh, the other images were done by Matteo Nicoletti. So they were on the podcast. You can check the, the podcasts. Um, I don't remember which number they were, but they were back in the days now, so quite in the past. Um, the hotel room, so you have this wardrobe when you enter, the bathroom door here, you can see the bathroom cell, and then you have the, it's also can be some sort of visible concrete, so that's sort of this industrial um, this industrial kind of interior with comfy chairs, comfy tables, uh, desk where you could work or TV to watch. And then you have the flats, which I imagined with, you can see all the living room have this very big uh, amount, like this very big amount of glass surfaces in the facade. So you can just walk walk on the balcony and see outside or just open the window. Uh, you can you have this comfy sitting situation. Uh, and then you can eat, cook. If you're cooking, you're having a party, you'll still be, people can sit comfy and wait for everything to be ready. So this is the concept. Uh, you have some nice parquet, nice wooden floor. Um, yeah, so basically this was it. This is the way you can enhance public life with architecture, data, analysis, and things like that. So I hope you enjoy the live. If you watch this live, uh, or if you watch it in a, on a rec on the recorded video that will be available. I hope you like it. You can uh, go on my Instagram account, which is at Leshtark, or just check the link in the description of the live. Uh, so you can, and then in the bio there, in the bio, you will find the link to the plans of to my portfolio, where you can see all other projects. Uh, if you're interested interested into my services, you can also DM me. <laughs> it's not a taboo. And uh, yeah, if there are no questions or comments, I think we're good for today. We did an intense one hour, 15 minutes live stream with the layouts. I hope you liked it. I hope it will be helpful for you to inspire you for your own project. And if you have any other questions, if you're a student and you're learning, or if you're just an architect and you want to collaborate or hear a little bit more you have all the links in the description you can contact me have a good one have a good evening and thank you for watching don't forget to press the subscribe button the like button 
comment below if you have if you like it say if you like it say if you want me to do other sessions like this and um, hope to see you soon bye bye